So yard sale season is in full effect in my area. I was at a church yard sale the other day and I managed to pick up this iPhone 7 Plus for $5. Actually, it's not even true. It also came with an iPhone 5S as well. So I got an iPhone 5S and an iPhone 7 Plus for $5. And the reason why I was interested in it is because the camera and the video recording capabilities in this phone is better than this camera shooting it right now. So my thought was, is I wonder if I could use this to replace this and get better quality video. Turn it on, set it all up, it actually was fine. They did not have it iCloud locked. I don't even know if the 7 Plus could be iCloud locked, but it wasn't locked to anybody's account, so it's been formatted and redone, and everything's great, except the battery sucks. The battery can be full charge one second, and the phone shuts off the next, so that's not going to be good for doing recording. So I went on Amazon and bought a battery kit because the 7 Plus is not one of these phones that is going to be locked down to a specific battery or any of that kind of stuff. I got a kit. It comes with all the tools, every, apparently everything you need. It comes with the new adhesive, comes with the new adhesive for the battery itself, came with tweezers. So I can pick it up with tweezers. It came with the suction cup to open up the screen and a couple of pry tools. And most importantly, the screwdriver with the special bit for the screws in an iPhone. So there are two little screws right down here at the bottom. So let's see if it's as easy as it looks in the supplied instruction manual. The best part about this is if I totally ruin this phone or break the screen, uh, it don't matter. This will also be good practice because my daughter recently got her first phone, which is an iPhone 11, and its battery probably needs to be replaced very soon. So, after you take the screws out, it says just to put the suction cup right above the home button. You pull on it, and then see if you can get the pick in to cut some of the adhesive. You can see when I do pull on it, phone display does come up just a fraction of a bit so that might be enough to get this in there there we go ah darn it turn the phone on Okay, I seem to be just struggling to get it around the top corner. Everything else seemed to come out okay. And the phone keeps turning on because I keep hitting the buttons. Oh, look at that. The battery died on me. At least I don't have to worry about it coming back on now. So I'm having real trouble getting the top part undone. And I'm not sure why. Not sure if they've got some sort of extra, so if this phone's been apart before and someone was using some extra good adhesive. There we go. Finally got it. Yeah, I think it was, there's some other adhesive on the top or some sort of extra clips. Oh, came back on again. <laughs> All right, so I got the phone open. And yeah, there, it looks like there's plastic clips along the top of the, the screen that just wouldn't give away very easily. So with these battery adhesive stuff, you're supposed to grab these little tabs, which came off the adhesive. So that didn't really help me. And then you're supposed to get them. And then when you get it picked up enough, uh, take it into the tweezers and just roll it as you pull. So like this. this is how I've seen lots of people do it on, you know, YouTube things.
And then hopefully this will just come out. There, that looks, yep, that got all of that one. Now you have the struggling part of how do you get the adhesive stuff off of your, <laughs> off of your tweezers. I'm just going to use this exacto. There, pull that off. Now, let's see if we can do this last one correctly. Okay, got that part. Lock it in the tweezers and start pulling. Ah, oh, it broke. Well, that's not going to work well. Let's hope we got enough of the adhesive off that we can actually get the battery out now. All right, so next thing we need to do is we need to... So we have to take off this little cover here and the teeny tiniest screws I have ever seen. There's three that we have to remove. Two. Oh, and there's a fourth back here. The fourth one back here is a different length of screw, so you have to remember to put that one back in the place, in the right place. So now that we have that unscrewed, should be able to get this little metal cover off. The battery connector, the battery connector had actually stuck to this and came off with it. So there's the battery connector right there. All right, so now we get to see if we can actually get this battery out of here. Apparently the main thing you don't want to do with these batteries is puncture them. That's bad. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to put in some isopropyl alcohol. So my camera just stopped recording at some point. I, I have no idea why. It just, it just did. So anyway, uh, let me go back over what I did. I took off the little metal cover that was over here. It was held on by three screws, and then the one in the back um, is a different, it's four screws. Three of them are the same size, and the one in the back is a different size. So you have to make sure you put that one separate to the other one. So you can see them in my little dish here. There's the three tiny, tiny screws, and there's the fourth. And those are all Phillips head, and this kit actually came with all the bits. So it actually comes with this little tiny precision screwdriver and lets you get all that stuff off. Um, when it came, when that came off, then I was able to disconnect the battery, which was here. I started working on the adhesive strips. Most of them broke. So what I did was I managed to pry up the, uh, battery just a little bit with the pry tool. 
which you're going to throw these out after you're done because they're just going to get eaten up and they're just useless after. And I was able to put some isopropyl alcohol in here. And then once I got it, once the ice IPA worked on it a little bit, I was able to pry it up a little bit more and I could see the two adhesive strips that had broken off. So I used the tweezers that they included. That's uh, used the tweezers they included to get in there, grab it, and I could pull the rest of the adhesive out and then the battery came out lickety split. So then I just dried up the IPA. So now the battery is out. So now we have to begin the process of reassembly. So here's the battery it came with. It's probably some, you know, fake battery or whatever, but it's going to work better than the junk one that I had in there, the one that was completely dead. Now we're supposed to put the adhesive strips on it, like this on the back, and then these bits will fold around to the front. So we take the blue side off first and apply that to the battery. Okay, I put the, took the blue side off and applied the pink side, and then it gives you another little blue side to peel off here when you're ready to put the adhesive around the corner. So it doesn't seem to come off very easily though. Oh, there we go. Static, it's stuck to me. Okay, so there's our, our adhesive tabs put back onto this battery. So you can see them there, so it folded around. So now all we have to do is take this off wow these cables are very very finicky there we go going to hook up the battery again very finicky cables Okay, I think that is down all the way. So let's let's test it out. Oh, that's a good sign. All right. Look at that. I changed the battery. Cool. Let's turn her off again open her back up. I'm going to put the little panel back in just like so. And now I get to put these teeny tiny screws back in without them flying away. Because if you drop it off your desk or work surface, consider them gone because you will never, ever find it again. So anyway, so there's one, two, three, and the fourth one's right there. Now, one of the last things you have to do before you can close up the phone is you have to get all of the remaining adhesive off of the phone. Clearing this stuff off is like a weird cheese pull. <laughs> now, the proper way to put the adhesive on would be to actually take this off again did take this off, disconnect this cable, disconnect the video, uh, the, the LCD screen. So just dis disconnect the whole display from the, the phone, put down the adhesive strips around the entire outside and then put it back together. Well, it's against my better judgment, but I think I'm going to do that. Personally, I don't even need the adhesive because this phone's not going to go outside again. It's just going to be used inside for the studio aka my basement but if someone is looking at this video in the future trying to figure out how to change the change the battery in an iphone i should probably do it correctly
right, so I have the whole display off of there now, so now I can put the adhesive on correctly. So then when you're putting in the adhesive, there's a big plastic side and a little plastic side. And the little plastic side is the one that stays in order to take off the adhesive when you get it inside in the actual phone properly. Just like that. So I also noticed that on the plastic there are some holes that they provide for you for certain things that are going to be on the phone. So now that I've got that all done, I can actually peel off the blue part. There we go. So now we take our screen. So there's the first connector. There's the second connector. There we go. Then the last connector is up here. And there it goes. You can feel it click in when you do actually get it. And now I'm just reinstalling the uh, little metal covers. I, I honestly don't know how Hugh Jeffries does videos like these all the time. Like, I, I, I would be fine if I never touched another cell phone repair in my entire life. But he does them all the time. But I guess with practice and... I'm also using the free tools that I got from a battery pack. I'm sure if I broke out my iFixit toolkit, this would be a lot easier to do. But I'll tell you right now, if you attempt this yourself, patience. Don't expect to do this quickly. Just take your time. Only three more screws to do. I can do this. It's done. So now um, I'm just going to power on the phone one more time just to make sure everything is still connected. Touch screen still works. Goody goody. Home button still works. Okay, so we can just button this up now. So it looks like you need to put the top in first and then push everything else down. It's in. Cool. So now we just have to put in the special screws back into the bottom. And there we just put in the two pentalobe screws and as Hugh Jeffries would say, and we're done. So we replaced a battery on an iPhone and now we're recording on said iPhone just to see if the quality is hopefully what I was hoping for better than the camera that's over here. Anyway, how do I rate this kit? Mm. Meh. The battery's fine. The instructions were okay, except for they show a different iPhone. They, they show you a different iPhone. They are generally okay, because you can, you can apply what you see to what you get in the, in the other different phone. But if, if you do do something like this, look it up online and see if you can find instructions for your specific phone because that will help you out a lot more than this will. The tools you get are okay. The tweezers, the ends have already been bent. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're bent. So they're not that great, um, but whatever. It was included for free. The little screwdriver is actually quite handy. The suction cup is pretty good too. Uh, it will, it holds. And then the, uh, you know, the SIM opening tool, otherwise known as a paperclip, is okay. There's nothing wrong with those parts. All in all, I'd have to say it's, it's a pretty good thing. Uh, the newer phones are definitely harder and there's definitely more adhesive. But with this iPhone 7 Plus, wasn't worried about it, gave it a try. It actually was, I'd say, pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.